Do you want to relax? Are you having trouble sleeping or focusing? CBD reduces anxiety, chronic pain, seizures, PTSD, depression. Try our CBD gummies or chocolates. You will be very satisfied. Visit cbdcollections.net 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 Hello everyone, it's that time again. As always, we interview Jamaicans around the world giving really positive energy to our community. And I'm sure you've all seen him. And if you haven't, then I suggest you get on uh, Instagram and learn about Raul Blaze. He is a multifaceted ambassador of Jamaica and a citizen of the world. He really is. Gifted with a great combination of creative skills, he has been able to engage other cultures to build common ground of shared humanity while practicing um, serial career choices. You know, as Jamaicans, we always have to do a bunch of little things. Lean in, folks, and listen to the most talented man and be inspired in our own great possibilities. So to do the interview is my co-host, Chris. Chris, take it away. Thanks, to Denise, and welcome, 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 Raul. Thank you for having me, guys. It's great to have you here. We want to get to know you a little first and your background that, that people may not know. You know, they may see the finished product, but you, it's been a journey. So yes. want to know a little about your Jamaican roots, where you hail from, and what are some of the situations that may have shaped your life viewpoints? That, that you kind of say, yes, these, these really shaped me. <laughs> oh, thank you for that question. I, I am a proud son of um, Smithville, Clarendon. For those who don't know, Clarendon, um, born as Clarendon is in central Jamaica, and I'm from the north western side. Um, my community, Smithville, is in the Mocker Mountain Range. I'm the John Crow Mountain, I believe. I need to check my geography. <laughs> and I grew up as a country boy um, with my grandparents and uh, my mother and um, living in Smithville, Clarendon, um, I always wondered what was, what was beyond the hills and, you know, and the valleys of Smithville. And that kind of piqued my curiosity. Um, and I told myself that one day I would love to see the world. And it, it's this humility um, of being from the ground and from rural Jamaica that... Um, set me on my path to both um, seek what was out there in the world, um, to educate people about where I'm from, and um, to, to push me to go beyond my very, very humble roots. That's fantastic. Well, you must have had some really good, proud assets that you want to share with the world. What are some of the fascinating things that you did as a child that you kind of, you know, that you think helped? Um, formalize your the breadth of of who you are. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so <laughs> I went to three different primary schools, right? I went to I went to Thompson Town Primary School and Smithville Primary School, but then I went to Mayfair Primary School, which is more in the town part. Um, mm -hmm. But regarding the interesting things in my life, I I so my grandfather. I'm from a farming community, so on Saturdays. I used to go to bush with my grandfather, and my grandfather um, plant um, um, uh, all orange key. And as a matter of fact, my grandfather's nickname is Mas Pum Pum <laughs> because he was a farmer of yams, and one of the yams was the Pum Pum yam. Um, <laughs> and um, so when I was growing up in Smithville, people call me, no matter where I go in the world, some people still remember me as Mas Pum Pum grandson. Um, <laughs> apart from going to the farm, um, going to bush, I grew up um, be at a river when, when water gone and I got to be with your friend them. And mm -hmm. um, I also 
I, I, I grew up, but my father wasn't really a part of my life that much, even though his family was close by. So I had, a, I had an interesting experience of the need to belong and the need to be loved. So um, a combination of, en- you know, enjoying living in rural, rural Clarendon, um, you know, and, and um, going go river, go be it mixed with a little bit of, you know, yeah. the sadness of, of, of that need to be loved and find out who I am. These were some very interesting aspects of my life that, you know, that came together to, 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 to make me be the person who I am today. That's fantastic. Yeah, you, you clearly from, you know, what you're doing today, you're such a multifaceted uh, person. Lots of creativity yes. that we see there. You know, um, your grandfather took took it to Bush, and and are there other people that help shape the cre- and nurture the creativity that you have? Yes, my mom. my My mom is the most um, my mom is the most influential person in my life, um, um, along with my grandmother. Um, but my mom and my brothers shaped who I am. Um, it was just us all the time. You know, when time was hard and, you know, it was just us going through the difficulties of life, you know. Um, I, I, did, I didn't grow up with, with, I grew up very humble. And um, people who may see me now, they may not, they may not know unless they've seen a video where I've spoken mm. about how humble I grew up. But apart from my mom, um, regarding my, 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 my being the, 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 per, the language person I am, um, I have to give a shout out to um senorita lindsay she passed away um recently in this year and she taught my mom in high school and she ended up she ended up teaching me um and she she kind of saw even though i was a very mischievous person in spanish class she was the person who, who realized my 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 gift of learning languages mm. i was in hindsight it was language then because it was just spanish but her her steadfastness and discipline towards you know me and telling me be quiet and listen she understood my potential in spanish and is i took that potential and then later on i added different languages so my mother and and my uncle and some other people but in the academic sphere um the, the yeah. language sphere i want to pick up my spanish teacher from high school that's real so you start with spanish but then you had in the other language so where did you go to to get the, all of this you know, you have a gift for language, but you have to get some learning. How did you go about expanding your language acquisition? Um, I I went to I went to the Glenmuir High School, and everyone knows Glenmuir. <laughs> um, I I I I was lo- I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say lucky. I, I I was as a child I was in in, in, in later on in life it faded out, <laughs> but I was a very very brilliant child. And um, I passed my common entrance to go to Glenmuir High School. And um, some schools in Jamaica, as you know, have a French program and a Spanish program. Yes. Glenmuir only had a only had a French, a Spanish program. But when I left, and um, Spanish always came back as a thing I, I did. Because even when I fail other subjects, for example, when it comes to literature and certain subjects, I didn't... Even though, even though now I, 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 I've become a writer, I didn't mm-hmm. do well in lit in high school because I didn't have the books or literature. But Spanish, even when I'm absent from school for like two days or whatever, I come back and I get one of the highest grades. Um, when I got to UE, um, I was a Spanish major, and I realized that there were people leaving my class to go to French classes. Um, huh? I couldn't do the same French that they were doing because they would have been doing minors and majors. So I started the beginner French course at UE. And um, after a year, I, 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 because I couldn't do the French that they were doing, I did beginner French and I joined the French club and I became the vice president of the French club without being a, a major or wow. minor in French. And my last year of, in my last year of UE, you know, when you want to look at prerequisites to build up your, your, your GPA, yes. um, Portuguese <laughs> was being introduced and I picked up Portuguese. And then, of course, later on, long, long after that, no, I went to Japan and I lived four years in Japan, and that's how the Japanese came in. That's incredible. So, you know, you, you know, the, you, know, you, have, you, know you have a really good uh, support system to your mom and other folks and your teachers, yes. and they yes. recognize, and you recognize that you're very gifted. 
Yeah. And you may have, you could have gone in a different direction. How did, how did you determine what your first, it seemed like you, you've done stuff somewhat serially. How did you determine <laughs> where your launch, your launching pad would be? Uh, I, I had, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to, to I, I think I wanted to be, to be a diplomat because it just sounded cool when I was in college. Okay. But unfortunately, um, and for in other countries and and in Jamaica, of course, um, um, nepotism and links run things, right? Even yeah, though yeah. even though when I left UWE, I was speaking many languages and I and I did a, a degree in um in um Spanish, etc. I knew it would have been hard for me to get um uh, my job, so I was just going with the flow. In my last year of UWE, I would say I would say the main my final year. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do when I left UWE because my mother wasn't living there, so I didn't have anywhere to live per se. But I wanted to continue in my path. So I tried outside, and I, I applied for the, the IDB um, the IDB in, in D.C. I applied to, to their, um, their internship, internship program. I said, like a joke, because why would the IDB or the World Bank or anything pick me? You know, I'm just a regular guy in UWE. And um, just when I was about to pack my things and leave UWE, um, they told me I got through. So um, getting to be an intern, the Caribbean's intern in Washington, D.C., that kind of encouraged me to, that even though I would not have gotten a job in diplomat or foreign affairs area in Jamaica, the world saw my potential. Washington, D.C. and the IDB and NGO saw my potential. So that kind of that that kind of encouraged me that hey maybe that was the direction you were meant to be in but when i finished my degree i had like a, 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 a an 80 percent scholarship to go to nottingham to do okay. a, a, a degree a master's in in um social and global justice but i couldn't afford the rest of the money um you know i had to, I had to show the other 20 percent. i didn't have it so i didn't get to go so i turned i went back to jamaica and i started teaching spanish so everything okay. that happened I kind of went with, with what was available to me at that time. Right, right. Well, how does the, the humor get into this now? Because it's, humor is, as you said, is a, is a, it's a great skill to have as a diplomat, and it's <laughs> yes. international, and you have language skills. You, you've somehow um, put the fuse that with humor um, because yes. you understand the human spirit and, and use that as a way of speaking across different uh, cultures. How, how did the yeah. humor piece get into all of this? Uh, the humor? Yes. Um, well, I, well, I was always, I, I think, I don't want to call myself a class clown, but I feel like I was a, I was a class clown like in, 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 in primary school, even though I did well in school. I was always the, 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 the person who, who so, so let, me, let me tell you, from a very young, even before I, later on in life, I, I knew the word for it, that the word was depression and, and that was something that was um, hereditary for me and that was what it was. I mm -hmm. knew I was different in terms of, I had a very intimate affair with sadness and as a result of that, I something in me told me that um, it's my responsibility to make sure that no one feels this sad because uh -huh. I couldn't imagine anyone you know, go feeling sad every day of your life. So I, I believe that there was something in me that always wanted to to see people laugh. And even when the even when, even when the class maybe was quiet in primary school, and this is the first time I'm saying it in this way. Maybe yeah. the first, when I'm in primary school and some part of high school, when I saw the class was quiet, I might have interpreted that as sadness, or even wow. when there was sadness, real sadness, I thought it was my responsibility to bring joy to people so that continued into high school and um and because even now when people see me they say oh you're always you're always like this no so mm -hmm. i believe um apart from that that need to not want people to feel that way um i also inherited humor from um both sides i i heard that my father was a very very funny man and then Okay. And on my mother's side of the family, a peer joke kind of the family. So when we link up, it's a very laugh on our rules. So I think, one, I felt the responsibility, which I'm okay with, to make people, make people not experience the sadness that I experienced. And two, 
I also think it was hereditary. So it came naturally either way, right? <laughs> That's great. But part of it, practicing that in Jamaica is fine, but now you are, you're on an international space in Japan. Yeah. How did you then yeah. use those skills and practice it in a different culture like Japan or wherever, or even DC where you were at IDB? Yeah, yeah. so when I was at the IDB, I, 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 think, um, I think with my, with my um, peers from Latin America, I think um, because my major was in Spanish literature and languages, so I, I, I had read books that some of them didn't even read themselves. But okay. my first books I read were in Spanish um, from Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Pablo Neruda, Laura Escobel, and those authors. So I was able to, to, to use the type of humor I used with my peers in D.C., was more an intellectually sarcastic humor. <laughs> okay. And in in Japan, um, the the way they realized I was funny because <laughs> I remember when I got, when I got to Japan and I didn't know what they were saying because the only thing they taught us um, at Jamaica was how to say hello, introduce yourself, right? <laughs> but when I got there and I heard people talking, I would come back to in the in the staff room before I go to my classes and I would just repeat them and <laughs> just repeat the words. And even though I may not, I wasn't able to get the words correctly, the accent and the intonation was so perfect that mm. they thought I was saying the word. So they always laugh every time I learn a new word and come <laughs> back to the classroom. Um, they, uh, the, the kids, Japanese kids, they would die every time I learn something. They would die every time I say it. So, um, and, and the, the funny thing is, that is how I learn languages. Um, I, 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 I mock I mock people. So if I hear people in the street, I'm going to mock them. And even Trevor Noah said that's how we learn languages too. So I was mocking the sounds I heard in the streets of Japan. And that was, that was um, to my knowledge, well, not to my knowledge, helping me to learn the language, but it's also provided humor for them who said, boy, this, this young man come from Jamaica, him, oh, him no officer, this now she's a sharp one. <laughs> I use mockery, I use mockery, but now a nice way <laughs> to bring forth my humor um, in Japan. <laughs> you, you, you have a sample that you can even share with us that, and give us both, both um, the language? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so um, they have this word in Japan, it's called irashaimase, irash, irashaimase, right? So when, when, whenever you go to a marketplace, You'll always hear Irashima say, but the thing is, you know, just like every culture, depending on your demographic, where you're from or your gender or sex, you might say differently. So uh -huh. an older guy would say Irashima say, or a cute girl in the, in in a in a um H and M store say Irashima say, it's softer. But I didn't know. I thought they were saying Yesu me say, Yesu me say. I was that was. But but even so even though I would say it's what I say it, it's the same exact duration of syllables, but they knew it wasn't that. But it was funny that I was that they thought I was attempting to say that word and um, with the same intonation. So they were saying Irashai Mase, which means welcome to my store, please um, patronize my store. But I was just saying, Yes, I say and I would walk around <laughs> the entire store and say, yes, me say. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so you, you also, I said, didn't extend here. In, I, actually, I live in Washington, D.C., outside of D.C., so I'm interested in wow. your stint also at IDB Bank. I know some folks wow. that wow. it's usually pretty serious, and you were interned there. Tell us a little yeah. about that, that stint. Um, so I don't know, even though at the IDB, the, the, I remember the lady in charge of the, 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 the document library, she was there Jamaican. So when I got there... Um, there are three Jamaican ladies there, and they mentored me so well. Um, I was I don't remember how many interns there were, but out of all the interns, for the prerequisite for the IDB is one, um, and I'm going to tell you how I cheated. Um, <laughs> one, you have to be finishing your 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 your, 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 your the point is you should be returning to school the next September. Right. Basically, I had gotten accepted to Nottingham. So in my mind, even though I'm not the money, my kids are boys, some miracle gotten, and um, they are getting to Nottingham. So, so um, later on, when they say that they needed proof I was going to school, I used my Nottingham acceptance letter, right? Which, which, <laughs> okay. which, was, which, which was, you know, I didn't know I was going, but I showed them my letter. 
Um, but when I when I got the, the prerequisites are that you have to have some decent grades, but the language part was important. So you have to speak um, one of the native languages and you have to speak English, right? So mm -hmm. those are the minimum. What I did, I was I spoke all of four official languages. <laughs> I wow. spoke English, Spanish, French, and Portuguese. And um, even when they called me for my interview, I remember I was outside. Uh, I was in Spanish club and they called me and um, on the phone and, and, and I said, you have the wrong number. And I said, this is the ID. I'm like, oh, sorry. I said, could you come back in like three minutes? So I had to call it myself, right? Because I'm like, <laughs> yeah. wait. I didn't remember applying because I saw it in, in careers and I just applied. I didn't know that these people were going to respond Seriously? to me. As a matter of fact, yeah. a guy who got through from Bahamas, he saw my name and said, Raul, I've been see seeing you in the meetings, in, you know, in the email meetings. I'm like, what meeting? So what I did was that they tested me. I just started in Portuguese like a few months before that, but they called me and they asked me questions in all four languages because I would mind no self for the four languages. So they, they gave me like a semi-interview in all four languages over the phone. And when I got to D.C., I worked in the office of the Auditor General. Right. Um, fun fact, that was the year 2006 when they were converting the, the paper documents to online, Which right? right? And I was the first I was the first intern to learn IDB Docs. I don't know if it's the same thing. And it, it was my knowledge of ID, IDB Docs that, that, um, I, 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 that I helped everyone in the Office of Auditor General at IDB learn how to use IDB Docs. And I was really, I was really, I was really praised for that. And my work was involved um, whenever the auditors went to lending countries. Right. And they bring back the, when they bring back the information, I was responsible for writing reports in three, not Portuguese, French. Three other languages. Did, 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 yeah, the languages. So depending on the language they wanted to be written and translated in, I had to do it. And um, so, so, so that was my, that was my um, experience um, at the IDB. But I, also, I was also overwhelmed by everyone else there because I've always had this low self-esteem kind of thing. But, but, but when I got there and I said, wait, Raul, these are the best in the world, and you are here with them. Yeah, exactly. And that that one of the biggest boost that has ever um, happened to me. And um, I worked on the case when when they lent, when they were doing the one section of the Highway 2000 in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I actually got to work on one of the cases from my own country. This so it wasn't good. that good. It wasn't that good um, story, but at least at least I got to work um, with one of the cases from my story. So that was my overall and i used to go in front of the white house go eat lunch every day because i'm frightened yes you know, that's the street there you're you realize it's close to there right <laughs> yeah exactly so but so what was, led you now to go to law school in japan oh, wow Ex -ex explain that jump <laughs> <laughs> so when i went to japan no i actually when i when i went to japan i, I wanted an, an exit strategy because um I, I, I love experiencing some, something different, but I realized earlier on that Japan wasn't for me. Nice. Um, so, and I said, okay, how am I going to leave now? So I said, when I was leaving Jamaica to Japan, and things always happened to me like this, um, right as soon as like the September, when I, two things happened when I woke up that, that, um, that July in, in, in Tokyo. Um, one, um, I woke up to, the earthquake when we arrived there and two i oh, got the yeah. acceptance letter from from um from the from the to law but it mm -hmm. wasn't the regular one it was the, it was the sponsored one in barbados where some of the fees would have been paid i'm like oh my god when i by the time reach at japan me hear this story so in my latter year when i was in um, toyama i wondered how i could find a way to do it so when i'm leaving jamaica japan i would have to i could go on you know just um, to do the latter part of it. So I applied for a school, um, a distance program that allowed me to study in Japan and I would do my exams at a, at a certain university in um, Japan. So right. that's how I applied. I applied for that distance. I did, my, I, did my, I did my degree distance. I studied by myself. I didn't have any peers. And I went through every single model, module and then I completed a law degree. Um, in 2015, about one year before I left, I, I got my... my my um, degree mailed to me. That's a, that's fantastic to to study yeah. law in a foreign country with uh, language and and culture. Uh, to me, my hats off to you. 
this is <laughs> yes, great. it was interesting. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but um, so it seemed like you, that 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 thread of caring for other people was also part of this initiative, and you worked for Amnesty International. Yeah, what what was that all about? So um, so in my last year, I, last two years I lived in Osaka. Um, in Osaka, while completing my last year, I did get an internship at um the Takedi Takedi um. Um, oh my God! Oh my! Oh my! Focus is my, my mentor. Okay. Um, yeah. I, 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 it's, 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 a, it's a law firm, right? Yeah. Um, he's, he's a he's a international lawyer, and um, he does um, um, common law and also practice law in Japan. I did my internship there, um, and I did the same thing: contract, Japanese, English, looking at make sure that the the Japanese law aligned with the the British, you know, law regarding yeah. on the area a common law and then um i've always i've always been a person that human rights is at the center of who i am i believe in the equality of all people and um i was just looking for um, an opportunity to volunteer and um before i moved to osaka i realized that there was a program there's a group 95 a group of volunteers in osaka so it's a travel um from a deep rural part of a place called okayama on the bullet train um every like every Sunday once in a while I travel there to have mm -hmm. the meeting and then in when I moved to Osaka I continued to have the meeting. So we'd meet there and we would do right for actions where we decide sometimes there are three cases. We work on those cases and write letters to the embassies and consulates in Osaka and Tokyo, um, asking them to pressure the, the Chinese government or the, the, the in the Andean region to work on certain cases. For example, in China, where well, and Myanmar, we had a few um, political prisoners. So I did it because one, I had a law degree. Um, I was a humanitarian, and I really wanted to do something about um, what was happening. So I would I worked with the Osaka Group 95 um, while I was there. That's so fantastic. But then you returned to Jamaica, and now you have this, you know, platform. What you're doing, what you're doing. Take us to how you you make that transition back and 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 the, decide to to do this in this phase of your life to do what you're doing um yeah um no i'm i'm living i'm living in florida now um, okay and my, yeah because my family is here so um that's right. how I, I i i got back here um when i when i when i got here i, I did work for um a, a company um waste management yes um, you know, and, and, and I, I was a I was a dispatcher, like a bilingual dispatcher. Right. But I realized that um a nine to five wasn't necessarily for me because I believe that all my creative juices were being, you know, yes. stifled yes. per se. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I I did however, um I went back again and, and I got certification. I'm a, I'm a per, I'm a I'm a personal trainer, I'm a qualified personal trainer. Okay. Um so I started I started working at the gym while while I'm creating my videos. Yeah. So 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 I I I found some way to do the things that I love. I love nature. I love the gym. I love comedy. So I I started um working on myself to become a personal trainer and become a, a like a Zumba teacher at the gym, but okay. also do my soca dance or classes, my private classes. On the on the, on the um, weekend, mm -hmm. and um, but the, the 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 more I look back at my journey and the places I've been, um, those those um, all the stories I had could not be kept in. So right. I wanted to, to 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 find a way to 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 show to tell people about my story in mm -hmm. a comical way. So a lot of the things I I do. Um, on social media are things that I've experienced before, you know, or situations I understood so much. So when I came back, I realized that I wanted to to do something in fitness and something in 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 in, in um in vlogging. So I've combined them um to do that. And these are just the major ca categories. Below these categories, there are subcategories of things <laughs> that I do. Yeah. This is wonderful. You're certainly a renaissance man. I want you to look ahead. Somebody as creative as you is always looking ahead, as people can see. 
there's all been a progression and a and a change in your you know what you're practicing. Um, mm -hmm. Look into your crystal ball. What do you see Raul Blaze doing in the near future? Um, I see me starting with my my plays. I see my I, I have a lot of plays written waiting for the opportunity to get the right people to audition for them. So I see first moving, um, doing my plays, taking them to the, to the, to the, the demographic with, you know, with the, with the highest number of Caribbean people out, you know, New York, Florida, Toronto, London. And mm -hmm. after a while, I see myself um, bringing some of these to the big screen. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so I, so I, I see myself um, having an entire production company, where I in where I write the script and I um, audition the actors, and I present um, Jamaica and the Caribbean in 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 the, the the multiplicity that it deserves. Because most of the time you see the Caribbean and Jamaica on media, it's derivative, you know, it's yeah. it, 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 it's one dimensional, and we are maybe the most multifaceted, multi-dimensional people in the world. So I want to bring Caribbean stories to the world and, 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 and show the greatness and depth of our culture and what it has to offer. I know you'll have lots of cheerleaders here for sure. Thank you for that <laughs> vision and, and for the, I know you'll get there given what your past has uh, produced. So as we close this most fascinating interview, I will, in the final words of wisdom you'd like to share with us? Yes, I, 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 I want people to know that so in the world we live in, there's so much, um, there's so many things, there's so many things that people are sad about and there's so many things to, 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 to be sad about. I want everyone to be the reason why someone smiles or, you know, or be the reason why someone is encouraged. That's short, sweet, but powerful. Yes. Thank you so much. For and to Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay. So to learn more about Raul Blaze, I encourage everyone to go on Instagram and um, and learn about him. I think you'll really enjoy that. You can also visit his website. Raul is an author. And so um, definitely support his work. And you can go to R-B-L-A-Z-E. Enterprise.com to learn about Jamaican diaspora, visit Jamaican diaspora.com to learn about Chris Daly, visit Chris Daly 360. Raul, we definitely enjoy spending time with you, reading your book, watching your Instagram, and just having a really good time um, encountering you. Bye now. Bye. Take care.